Welcome back everyone to the Code Long series on creating a chat application. In the previous video, we set up an account in Heroku and we installed PostgreSQL locally in our system. In this video, we'll create a simple Flask application. So we're going to be working off the folder that we created in the previous video and we are still in the virtual environment that we also created in the previous video. So let's create our first file. I'll call it application.py. Next, we create a folder where we will store the HTML files. By default, Flask will look for the HTML files inside a folder called templates. Next, we create a folder where we will store our CSS and JavaScript files. Again, by default, Flask will look for CSS and JavaScript files in a folder called static. Then we initialize a Git repository. Now, in case you don't have Git installed locally in your system, I will include a link below for the installer for various operating systems. And if you want me to do a video on Git, just let me know in the comments below. We already have Git installed in the system, so I just need to say Git INIT. So far, so good. Let's just clear the screen. Next, I'm going to create a Git ignore file to avoid tracking files and folders that are not meant to be distributed. Now, there are three folders I will add to this file. VENV is the folder created by the virtual environment. We don't need Git to track this folder. PyCache is a folder created by Python 3 with the compiled bytecode. It makes the code execute faster. Now, the contents of this folder is not meant for distribution, so we don't want Git to track it. So underscore, underscore, pycache, underscore, underscore. Finally, Flask session is a default folder where Flask saves the session files. This is again something that we don't want Git to track. So let's just add the folder here. That's it. We save the changes and then we exit. So our git ignore file has these three folders added to it. So let's see the status of Git. So there are these two folders which are not being tracked right now. Let's add them to Git. And let's commit. Next, we will install Flask. So we will use pip again. So pip install So we have successfully installed uh, Flask and we have also installed a couple of modules which also get installed with Flask. Okay, so now let's start writing some code. We open the file application.py. So from Flask that we installed, uh, we will import uh, the Flask class. Okay, next we will create an instance of the Flask class. Uh, we will call this app. We need to pass in the name of this module and in Python you do this by using underscore underscore name underscore underscore. Now why do we need this line? Sometime back the Python community came up with a set of standards called as Web Server Gateway Interface or WSGI. This standardized way to run Python for web application. One of the core specifications of the standard is that there has to be a central callable object which the server can invoke. So this is how Flask implements it. Now that's not something that I'm doing in this video, but you should be mindful that for any library or package that we are using, you should necessarily refer to the official documentation page. And I will leave the links below to all of this. Now next, in order to keep our client side session secure, we will create a secret key. This secret key will be used by Flask to sign the cookies used during the session. The secret key is some sort of a passphrase that's known only to us. So the more complex the passphrase is, the better it is. For now, we'll just keep a super simple text. And later on, when we come to deployment, I'll show you how to create a proper secure key and configure this in Heroku in a way that when you publish the source code online, the secret key will still remain a secret. So how the web app will work is that for every URL or the page of the website, we will define a function. This function will say what actions we want Python to take and which content to display, etc. Now, how this is done is using something called as decorators, which is the at the rate symbol, then app.root, bracket open. So what is this page that we want this to be applied to? So we are looking at the root of the website. 
The second thing we define is the ways in which the user can access this page. In our case, we will use both get and post methods. Next, we need to write the function which will be triggered each time a user visits this page. Let's call this function index. For now, when a user visits the page, we'll have the app return some text, something dramatic like, I'm alive. The next step is uh, something that, strictly speaking, you don't need to do in the version of Flask that we are using. However, later on when we use Socket.io in our app, this sort of syntax will flow in smoothly. So just hang in there with me and let's just go through this piece of code. Now here we need to tell Python what to do when we run this file. So the way this is done is with a conditional statement. So I'm going to say if using Python's inbuilt variable called underscore underscore name underscore underscore. Now what this does is that it will return the name of the module we are running. Now Python assigns underscore underscore main underscore underscore to whatever file is being run as a script. So not a file which we imported, but a file which we are running directly from the command line. So when we run this file from the terminal, Python will always evaluate this condition to be true. And whatever we type below it will always execute. So what do we want the program to do? We want to run our Flask application. We want the program to run in debug mode so anytime we make a change to the application.py file, we won't have to restart the server. So the way to do it is to say debug equals true. Okay, now we can test the program. So let's open Chrome. Okay, so we will copy this URL right here. Okay, so you can see the text that we had uh, the app return is showing up right here. So this part seems to be working fine. When a user visits the page, instead of just returning a simple text as I'm alive, let's return a HTML file. To do this, we use a method called render underscore template. First, let's import it. And let's use render underscore template. And in brackets, we include the name of the file we want to display. So we haven't created this file so far, but let's call it index.html. But we could have called it anything. Now, before we start working on this index.html file, let's talk a bit about templating engines. When you install Flask, it also automatically installs a templating engine called Jinja2. Now, Jinja allows you to do a whole lot of amazing things. The one thing that we are going to talk about is the ability to create reusable templates for a web application. Now, why do we need templates? Well, in any website that you see, there are going to be lots of elements that are common, like the header, the navigation bar, or the footer of the website. So instead of copy pasting the exact same code on every single page of the website, we can simply create a template which will have all the common elements, the header, the footer, the navigation, etc. And once we have this template, we can create individual HTML files which will have their own distinct content. Now let's see this in action. Now the layout template for the pre-login pages are gonna be different for the chat application. So let's create a layout template and call it pre-login layout. So we'll have to create this inside the templates folder. So this is the template file. The individual page that we have, let's call it index.html. Okay, first let's work on the template. We'll go to the pre-login uh, layout.html. Okay, so this is the template file. Anything we put in this file can be used by other pages of the website. So let's put all the common elements of an HTML file. To start with, let's create a simple HTML file. Now remember, this is a template and all pages that will inherit this template will have their own unique title tags. The way to introduce this is to do this, block title and end block. Now let's say I also want to append the name of the uh, app at the end of the page title. So I can do something like this. This will be clearer once we see this in action. So just stick with me for a bit. Now, this is the template page we are working on. So any page on the web app which uses this layout will have all this HTML code above. So next we will add a section where individual pages can display their own unique content. 
So to achieve this, we will write a block for content like this. This again is Jinja syntax. So curly brackets, percentage, block content, and then the percentage. And we end this with end block. So when we work on the individual pages, we can simply write the content, which will go between these two blocks. So you'll see how this is done in a minute. Let's save this file and let's open index.html. So this is the file which will inherit from the pre-login layout template that we created. What we want to do is extend the template we just wrote to this page too. The way to do it is to use Jinja syntax to say extends and then the name of the template file within quotes. Now remember that in the pre-login page, we had kept a placeholder for page title. So let's grab just this part we bring it here, paste. So inside here, I can add unique content, which is relevant only for this page. The title of this page is registration. Next, we write the main body of content, which is unique to this page. So again, let's go back and grab the code from here and paste it here. Now let's add a header tag. Let's call it get started. Now, before we go further, let's just make sure that everything is working as it should be. So I'm going to save this file. I'm going to save application.py and I'm going to refresh this page. So as you can see, it's now displaying the HTML file that we created. The title of the page is registration and this hyphen R chat, the last part of the title of the page that is kept inside the template itself. We see that everything is working as it should. So in this video, what we did was we created a simple chat application, which displays a very simple HTML file. As of now, it just has a header. So let's commit the changes that we have done so far. I'm going to stop the server. So let's commit the changes, basic registration page. It's actually not even a registration page, but so in this video, we created a simple HTML template and rendered it using Python and Flask. In the next video, we will add a form to the registration page using WT forms. So if you found this video helpful, remember to hit the like button and consider subscribing to the channel. See you in the next video.